What's going on everybody? Todd here. Today we're going to assemble the Mighty Multi Utility Trailer from DK2. The tools I'll be using for this installation are an electric impact driver, 22, 21, 19, 17, and 14 millimeter sockets, 22, 19, 17, and 13 millimeter wrenches, a 17 millimeter ratcheting wrench, a quarter inch ratchet with seven and 10 millimeter sockets, a Phillips head screwdriver, and a torque wrench with 21 millimeter socket and small extension. I'll also be using some wire loom and dielectric grease. Now make sure you're subscribed to our channel to stay up to date with our latest content. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we're starting here. I've already unboxed the trailer. This is the base of the trailer is actually in the bottom of the box. I've already taken everything out that was packaged on top of it. And I also flattened out the box. Do that because the box gives you a surface to work on so you're not scuffing up the trailer as you're installing everything. Uh, we're also gonna make sure that this stays upside down for right now. That's how it comes packaged. We're gonna leave it upside down for the next few steps. Also understand your orientation here. Uh, the frame here has got some pins. This faces towards the front. This is gonna go towards the truck that you hook it up to. Um, we're also gonna have some draw bars that come up here that hook up to the trailer uh, or to the trailer hitch. Um, so make sure you have enough length behind you to uh, install the draw bars. We'll also be flipping this over 180 degrees at some point in the installation. So make sure you have enough room behind on the other side of the trailer so you're not hitting anything as you flip it over. The next, let's go ahead and pull out the cotter pins and set these pins off to the side. That way we can set our draw bars in place. Okay, so now for this next phase of the installation, I've already got some of the parts kind of laid out in, in the orientation they're gonna go on. So this is just to kind of help you guys visualize how it goes together. So we've got a couple of uh, draw bars. Now I'm gonna do one side, assemble one side together. We're gonna do the exact same thing on the opposite side. Uh, the draw bars are going to kind of come in and angle towards each other and come together. Uh, what we're gonna do is lift up the draw bar and then drop it down into the frame slot up at the front. Okay, now here is the back side of our draw bar. Uh, we're just gonna let it hang out right here for right now, but I do wanna point out we've got a hole in the draw bar right here. We've also got a C channel attached to the frame that's welded in place. It's got a hole on this side of the C channel and also a hole on this side of the C channel. What we're gonna do is lift up our leaf spring and the part that has uh, the ring is gonna go towards the front and the back side is just gonna lay in place. We wanna make sure that these holes line up here um, in your kit, you're also going to have a couple of 14 millimeter bolts. That's 14 millimeter diameter. There's going to be a longer one or a short one. The short one goes to the rear, long one goes to the front. We're going to take this apart. We're going to run that bolt through the draw bar and through here. And next, we're also gonna have a couple of fender brackets in the kit. And I wanna show you the difference between the two. Uh, you've got one with a longer leg and one with a shorter leg. The shorter leg goes to the back, the longer leg goes to the front. We're gonna slide that over top of the bolt, put the washer on there, and then just loosely install the nut. And let that hang there for right now. We're not gonna tighten that up just yet. Do the same thing on the back. Run the bolt through, put our fender bracket on with the flat washer and nylock nut. Again, don't tighten that down all the way, just let it hang out for right now. Repeat this assembly process on the opposite side. Okay, now we went ahead and installed the other side as well, so they're just kind of sitting next to each other. This other side also has a trailer cable going through it, I want to point that out. Um, now we're going to go ahead and attach our coupler. Now remember, Everything is upside down, so we're gonna go ahead and turn our coupler upside down. You'll notice we've got a couple of holes in the coupler that's gonna line up to the holes here. So we're just gonna line that up. Once all that is lined up, we've got a couple of bolts that are 12 millimeter bolts and 80 millimeters long. What we're gonna do is line them up to the holes and run them through. Uh, this one in the back, we're just gonna go ahead and loosely attach the hardware. 
Now the second one, we want to make sure as that bolt goes through, it goes underneath our cable. All right, and now the second channel that it's going through, uh, this the, the, does not have the cable in it. What we want to do is have our safety chain hook up to this area. So we're going to take our safety chain and pick it up and find the center link. And we're going to set that link inside and push that bolt through the center link in the safety chain. All right, once it's through the coupler, we're going to go ahead and attach the hardware. Now we can go ahead and tighten up this hardware. We're going to use a 19 millimeter on each side. All right, now we're going to go ahead and come back here and snug up this assembly and this assembly right here. We're going to use a 22 millimeter on each side, but we want, don't want to get it too tight. We want our fender bracket to still be able to be moved around. We just want to get it nice and snug so this can still be adjusted. Repeat the same process for the opposite side. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and reinstall our pins. Okay, now we're over here on the other side because this is where we have the trailer wire. Now, I'm going to go ahead and run some loom on the trailer wire. This is not required for the installation, but I definitely recommend it because running loom around here keeps from rubbing back and forth across the edge uh, here on the trailer. So how I'm going to do the loom is basically I like to take a wrench and get it started, opened up. And you just kind of run the loom right inside. Once I've got loom wrapped around some on the end, I'm going to go ahead and push that loom back and feed it back into the tube. And then continue feeding the wire through the loom all the way out. All right, next I'm going to go ahead and run this up underneath here. I'm going to take some dielectric grease, apply it to the connector, and then plug that into the harness that's on the trailer. Next, I'm going to route my wire with wire loom up underneath the crimp connectors and then bear down and get that in place. You can follow this up with any, any kind of wire ties you find necessary as well. All right, now we're going to go ahead and set the axle in place. Uh, so I'm just going to set it on top of the leaf springs for right now. Uh, if you notice on the leaf spring, we've got a bolt that's holding that leaf spring together. And the head of the bolt is on the top side of the leaf spring. 
on the top side of this axle, we've got a hole. That hole needs to be flipped upside down and over top of the head of that bolt. We're going to do that on both sides. All right, now we're going to use our U-nuts and our U-nut plate. You'll notice you got a large hole in the center of the U-nut plate. Uh, also, you want to make sure this is oriented properly. So the U-nuts need to go around the axle like so. If the U-nut plate is not oriented properly, those holes are not going to line up. So make sure you have it elongated to go along the axle. And this hole is actually going to line up with the bolt that's coming through the bottom of the coil pack uh, or the leaf pack. So we're going to go ahead and line that up and take and drop the first U-bolt in place. Loosely install flat washer and uh, nylock nut. Do the same with the other U-bolt. And we're going to hold all this together as we tighten down the nuts with a 17 millimeter. I'm going to use a ratcheting wrench. Now initially what I want to do is just make the nuts come up and contact the plate before I tighten anything down all the way. That will allow me to get everything aligned and get everything straight and then I can go ahead and tighten. Okay, now we've got all four of the nuts and washers connected and actually making contact. Let's go ahead and tighten down everything evenly. Okay, now repeat the same on the opposite side. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and install the tires. So what we're going to do is pull off the lug nuts from the hub. We're going to take one of our tires, lift that up, and slide it in place. Now, you'll notice as this can kind of wiggle around a little bit, these are going to be lug centric. Uh, so what you want to do is center everything with the lug. So you're going to taper side that what I like to do is have the bottom one at the very bottom and get that lug nut started. And as the taper gets into the hole, I like to kind of wiggle the, the wheel around a little bit to help to center everything. And I'll go ahead and put the next one on. Again, all of these, the taper is going to need to go towards the hole on the wheel. All right, we're not going to torque these to spec yet, but I am going to snug them down with our electric impact driver. I'm using a 21 millimeter on this. Repeat the same on the opposite side. Okay, now underneath the trailer, uh, we've got the 
the harness that goes to all four corners. So back here in the back, it's going to the tail lights, and in the front, it's going to go to the corner markers. On all four of our connectors, I've already installed some dielectric grease. So now let me go ahead and show you how to install the corner lights or the, the, the tail lights. Uh, so this is one of the tail lights. This is actually the driver's side tail light. Uh, you can tell the difference from the driver's side and the passenger side. The driver's side has a clear window on the bottom. Now remember that this is flipped upside down, so when we flip it over, this side will be the driver's side. Right now, it kind of looks like the passenger side, but we still have to flip it over. So this needs to be facing up because when we get flipped over, it's going to be facing down. Uh, we want to go ahead and take off our hardware on the back. Uh, there's a little rubber strip that's going to stay, but we want to take off the bolts or the nuts and also the washers and set those to the side. Uh, now keep in mind we've got uh, your, your wire harness that comes out of here and there's a little channel. Make sure that that stays in here when we clamp everything together so that your wire harness doesn't get pinched. Um, and this right here is our license plate bracket. That's what this light is for. Uh, so whenever that's going to slide over top of there, the license plate bracket needs to be kind of bent towards this light so that light can illuminate the license plate. Now we're going to set this off to the side. I'm going to show you how to prep the bracket. Now you're going to have uh, some bolts in the kit that are going to go through this bracket. Now this bracket is kind of a mirror image of the passenger side bracket, except you have an open window that the, the tag light is going to shine down through. Uh, so the open window on the driver's side, if, there, if it's just a closed plate, that goes to the passenger side. Also, this right here, these holes are going to line up to the holes in the frame of the trailer, and this hole is going to come up to the bottom. That's where uh, our uh, light harness is going to pass through to connect here. So what we're going to do is run our two bolts through that bracket. And then slide them into the frame. And then connect our hardware loosely for right now. All right, now we're going to hold this straight as we use a 17 millimeter on each side and tighten that hardware up. Okay, now when you look down through this window, you're going to notice we've got a couple of holes in the back side of this bracket. What we're going to do take our tag bracket off. We're going to slide our connector for our tail light through the opening on this side. We're going to take our tag light, run back over top of those bolt holes or those bolts, and then slide it through. And then we're going to use the included hardware and attach it from the back. I'm going to snug that up with a 10 millimeter. All right, now we're going to go ahead and connect the connectors. The other side installs the exact same way. We just don't have a license plate bracket or a tag light window. Okay, now for the front, both of your corner signals install the exact same way. So this is the way they go on. Take your fixture and run the harness through the hole in the frame and go ahead and connect those together. Next in your kit, you're going to have some really long skinny bolts. Those are going to go through the corner marker and then also through the small hole in the frame. Now because they're so small, they can be a little tricky to line up. 
All right, and on each one of those bolts, you're going to have a small nut that connects. Now to snug those up, we're going to hold the one end of the bolt with a Phillips head screwdriver and then tighten down the other end with a seven millimeter. Repeat the same on the opposite side. Okay, so we went ahead and flipped the trailer right side up. Now we're gonna go ahead and install the sidewalls. I'm gonna start by lining up the center first. Make sure that the exposed portion of the frame on the sidewall is facing towards the outside. Once you get the center lined up, make sure that the ends also fall into place. All right, now as the frame of the sidewall comes down, you'll notice it actually lines up to two holes in the bracket that's welded onto the frame of the trailer. Once that's lined up, go ahead and take your included M10 hardware, run through the back side into the front. Then we're going to go ahead and install flat washer and nylox and then tighten up with a 17 millimeter on each side. repeat the same process on the opposite side and then do the same with the other sidewall. Okay, now depending on the product that you have, you may either have the drive up gate or the standard gate. Either way, they install the exact same way. We're gonna go ahead and install the standard gate. Make sure that the DK2 logo is visible from the outside. Okay, so what we're gonna do is lift up the gate and set it into the frame. We also wanna make sure that these pins drop down inside the catch. Do that on both sides. Next, we're going to take our provided M10 hardware and run it through. Get the bolts lined up on both sides, followed up with a washer and nylock nut on each side. Okay, next what we're gonna do is use a 17 millimeter on each side to snug this up. All right, snug it up, but make sure you do not crush this channel. Do that on both sides. All right, now go ahead and insert your pins on either side, lock them into place. Repeat that on this opposite side and the front gate installs the exact same way as the tailgate. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and install the fender. So what we wanna do is set the fender in place and line it up to our brackets. You may need to still move the brackets around a little bit to get everything nice and lined up. Uh, once they're lined up, go ahead and put your provided M8 hardware through it. So we're going to do the bolt going through the, the, the bracket and into the fender, and then washer and lock nut on the back side. Also going to line up the back.
All right, so there is side to side adjustment on these fenders. So go ahead and get them set where you want. Then you, we're gonna use a 14 millimeter on the bolt side and a 13 millimeter on the nut side and tighten everything up. Okay, now we're underneath the fender. The fender bracket, as you recall, is still hooked up to our leaf spring hardware. We did not tighten that down. Now is when we can go ahead and tighten that down. So what we're gonna use is a 22 millimeter on each side and get that tightened down, both in the front and in the back. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and tighten up the leaf spring hardware on the front side of the fender as well. Repeat the same process for the opposite side. Okay, now with the tire chalk, we're gonna go ahead and bring the lug nuts to 80 foot-pounds. Make sure you follow the proper torquing sequence. Repeat the same process on the opposite side. Well, that's all it takes. With the right tools, it's simple to do in your own driveway. If you find this video helpful, make sure and give us a thumbs up. If you want to know more about the product, check the link in the description below. And as always, if you have any questions, call the experts or visit us online at realtruck.com.